I recently made a video grading the 2022 NFL Draft, but those grades were projecting ahead. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look back at the 2021 NFL Draft to grade how every first round pick performed as a rookie. Enjoy. First overall pick, Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence's rookie season was a disappointment no matter how you look at it. He just never looked comfortable at any point. He got a pass because of the Urban Meyer nightmare, but now that Meyer is gone, Lawrence is under pressure to live up to his generational prospect status. I have my doubts. Grade D. Second overall pick, Zach Wilson. I never once believed in Wilson. He had one great season at BYU against terrible competition. Plus, it's illegal for the Jets to have a good quarterback, so it's no surprise Wilson was terrible as a rookie. His supporters will say he had no help, but the team got him some talented weapons in the draft this year, so he really has no more excuses. Grade D-. Third overall pick, Trey Lance. It's only a matter of time before Lance takes over for the gorgeous, handsome stud Jimmy Garoppolo. And to be honest, I'm kind of shocked it hasn't happened yet. Lance saw minimal time as a rookie, so only time will tell whether or not trading up to get him was worth it. He certainly has insane potential, but concerns about his accuracy remain. Grade incomplete. Fourth overall pick, Kyle Pitts. It's not very often you see a tight end get drafted in the top four, so expectations were high for Pitts. He mostly lived up to him, finishing with 68 catches and over 1,000 yards. The only eyesore on his stat line was just one touchdown. But much like Julio Jones in 2011, it looks like Atlanta taking a major risk on a receiving target will pay off. Grade A-. Fifth overall pick, Jamar Chase. Chase had plenty of skeptics after sitting out all of 2020 and a terrible preseason that saw him drop a ton of passes. Well, it's safe to say now that that meant jack shit. Chase had one of the best rookie wide receiver seasons ever and helped since he come within inches of winning the Super Bowl. If he stays healthy, he should be a Hall of Famer by the time his career is over. Grade A+. Sixth overall pick, Jalen Waddle. Waddle finished his rookie season with over 100 catches, but it was largely off of dinks and dunks. His yards per catch was a putrid 9.8. I don't really blame him for this, though, because his quarterback has a noodle arm. Only time will tell if Waddle can evolve into more than an underneath receiver. He certainly has the speed for it. With Tyreek Hill now in Miami to take attention off of him, he needs to develop into an elite wide receiver to justify the selection. Grade B-. Seventh overall pick, Penis Swollen. I mean, uh, Penis Sewell. It goes without saying that not much went right for Detroit during the 2021 season, but one of the few glimmers of hope was Sewell. He looks like he's going to be a stalwart on the Lions' offensive line for years to come. Now the team just needs to find a quarterback and a running back and a wide receiver. You get the point. Grade A-. minus. Eighth overall pick, J.C. Horn. Horn's selection was questionable at the time due to Carolina's various needs offensively, and it looked even more questionable after Horn went down for the season with an injury after just three games. It's impossible to tell at this point whether Horn will become a good player, but early returns have not been kind for Carolina. Grade incomplete. Ninth overall pick, Patrick Sertain II. I predicted Sertain would win Defensive Rookie of the Year award before last season, and although he lost out to that to Micah Parsons, he still justified his selection with a stellar rookie year. He has given the Broncos an identity on defense, and he should become an all-pro caliber corner in very short order. Grade A. Tenth overall pick, Devonta Smith. Smith might not have had the best stats of any rookie wide receiver, but outside of Chase, I really feel like Smith has the most superstar potential. Sure, some of this might just be the Eagles fan in me talking, but despite playing in a run-oriented offense with a questionable quarterback, Smith still put up good numbers. Smith and A.J. Brown should terrorize defenses this year and for years to come. Hopefully Hurts can hold up his end of the bargain. Grade A-. 11th overall pick, Justin Fields. I was never high on Fields even before his rookie season. As I always say, it's illegal for both the Jets and Bears to have a good quarterback, and nothing I saw from Fields in 2021 changes my opinion. His physical tools are obvious, and he has flashes of stellar play, but too often he's slow to process and makes boneheaded plays. Now that Matt Nagy is gone, Fields doesn't have a scapegoat anymore. Grade D+. 12th overall pick, Micah Park. Parsons. Parsons wasn't just one of the best rookies in the league, he was one of the best players, period. He dominated and finished with 13 sacks, 20 tackles for loss, and 30 quarterback hits. He was deservingly named All-Pro and finished second in Defensive Player of the Year voting. Of course, he's still on the Cowboys, so he didn't win a playoff game, but he will be a cornerstone for them for the next decade. Real weirdo, though. Grade A+. 13th overall pick, Rashawn Slater. Draft a franchise quarterback and give him support on the offensive line. That's the method the Chargers are smartly following, and Slater was a great addition. He ended up making the Pro Bowl and finished very well in terms of grading and pressure stats, especially for a rookie tackle. They are building something special in Charger land. Grade A. 14th overall pick, Elijah Vera Tucker. Tucker's rookie season was shaky. He has shown promise as a run blocker on the inside at left guard, but his pass protection leaves a lot to be desired. He had bad metrics in terms of pressures allowed, and it's crucial he develops into a 
star in order to get the most out of Zach Wilson? I have serious doubts. Grade C minus. 15th overall pick, Mac Jones. Even after an objectively good rookie season, there still remains legit concerns about Jones' ceiling and whether or not he can develop into a star. He was inevitably compared to Tom Brady, but it looks like he'll land somewhere between Andy Dalton and Kirk Cousins. He has limited physical skills and it could put a cap on New England's offense moving forward. We'll see. Grade B. 16th overall pick, Zayvon Collins. Collins struggled to get playing time as a rookie, finishing with just 13 tackles and spending much time on the bench behind Jordan Hicks. Collins' talent is jaw-dropping, and if he ever reaches his potential, Arizona's defense could get even scarier. He needs to improve in coverage, though, to stay on the field. Grade C-. 17th overall pick, Alex Leatherwood. Leatherwood was seen as a major reach at the time of his selection, and his play proved doubters correct. He was arguably the worst tackle in the league, getting penalized more than anybody and allowing a ton of sacks and pressures. He's already running low on chances heading into year two. Grade D-. 18th overall pick, Jalen Phillips. Phillips fell a bit in the draft due to injury concerns, but his play as a rookie showed if he can stay on the field, he has great potential. He finished his rookie season with eight and a half sacks and over 40 pressures. He could stand to get a little bit better in run support, but you can never have enough pass rushers. Grade B+. 19th overall pick, Jameen Davis. Davis played a lot as a rookie and finished with a respectable 76 tackles, but we all know there's more to good linebacker play than pure tackle stat. He has struggled getting off of blocks, and larger blockers give him fits. He's an elite athlete and the potential is there, but his rookie season was somewhat underwhelming. Grade C. 20th overall pick, Kadarius Tony. Tony's talent is immense. He is incredibly shifty in space and tough to tackle, but he needs to stay on the field as he missed seven games as a rookie. He also had terrible coaching and bad quarterback play, so it would be tough for him to look great. However, the leash is short for first round wide receivers, and if he has another miss season in year two, the bust chance will grow. Grade C. 21st overall pick, Quiddy Pay. Pay had a solid, if not unspectacular rookie season, finishing with a respectable 32 tackles and four sacks, but his athleticism says there is a lot of room for improvement. Stats show he finished with 36 quarterback pressures, but 16 of those came against the Jets and Jaguars, so you'd like to see him do better against good competition. Grade C+. 22nd overall pick, Caleb Farley. Farley's talent has never been in doubt, but his durability has. He slid in the draft due to injury concerns, and unfortunately those popped up again, as he played in just three games as a rookie before tearing his ACL. It's impossible to make a judgment on him at this point, but if you can't stay on the field, you can't help your team. Grade incomplete. 23rd overall pick, Christian Derisaw. Derisaw missed five games as a rookie, but when he was on the field, he graded out very well. His real potential, though, is as a run blocker where his size and athleticism really shine. As long as he stays healthy, it looks like Minnesota has found their left tackle of the future. Grade A-. 24th overall pick, Najee Harris. Harris's raw stats look nice as he finished with over 1,200 rushing yards and 467 receiving yards, but I'm sorry, I just don't see a future star here that so many others do. He didn't have a good offensive line, sure, but the real superstar running backs are able to produce without the best circumstances. I don't think Harris is special and misses too many running lanes. Grade C minus. 25th overall pick, Travis Etienne. Etienne's selection was much maligned at the time due to Jacksonville already having a good running back in James Robinson on the roster, and it looks even worse now after Etienne broke his foot and missed his entire rookie year. Could he still be good? Sure. But will it really matter? I don't think so. This pick could have been used way better. Grade incomplete. 26th overall pick, Greg Newsom II. Newsom didn't record an interception as a rookie, but he graded out very well in coverage, which is pretty important for a position whose job is to cover opponents. He ended up missing five games, but Newsom and Denzel Ward look like it will be a very good tandem in the secondary for a long time in Cleveland. Grade A-. 27th overall pick, Rashad Bateman. It was a rocky rookie year for Bateman. He missed the first five games with injury. Then, just as he started to show flashes of goodness, Lamar Jackson got hurt. In Baltimore's run-oriented offense, I don't know if any wide receiver will ever put up huge numbers, but I think if Lamar can stay on the field, he and Bateman could form a good rapport. Grade C+. 28th overall pick, Peyton Turner. Turner was considered a bit of a reach on draft night, and one year later, it's still too early to really tell if that's true or not, considering he appeared in just five games. Nevertheless, he should still be starting for New Orleans next year, and we'll get a better idea then. Grade incomplete. 29th overall pick, Eric Stokes. Stokes has the look of a future star. His coverage skills are legit, and he and Jair Alexander give Green Bay a good cornerback duo for the first time in what seems like forever. The only thing he could stand to improve on is his ball recognition when he's already in position to make a play, but this pick looks like a home run for the Packers. Grade A. 30th overall pick, Gregory Rousseau. Rousseau had an up-and-down rookie year. He has been a rotational piece, and his pass rush numbers leave a bit to be desired considering his physical gifts. I think despite his inconsistent rookie year, there's
there's enough here to make Bills fans cautiously optimistic moving forward. If he improves greatly, Buffalo should be Super Bowl favorites. Grade C+. 31st overall pick, Odufe Owe. Out of all the defenders taken in this draft, Owe might have the biggest potential, which is saying a lot. It's not very often you get a 6'5", 250-pound athletic freak like him, and although his counting stats weren't eye-popping as a rookie, his efficiency as a pass rusher should have Ravens fans feeling ecstatic about his future. Grade B. 32nd overall pick, Joe Tryon Shoyanka. Tryon Shoyanka had the luxury of not being rushed into the starting lineup right away as he sat behind Jason Pierre, Paul, and Shaq Barrett, but when he got on the field, he was very efficient at causing pressures. Now that JPP is gone, Shoyanka should move into the starting lineup and develop into a legit force. After all, he has Tom Brady to will him to improve, right? What a hero Tom Brady is. Grade B. 